What God said to me was this. He said, take notes and learn. He said, now the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And instantly I understood that what God meant was that he was measuring people. Now it's very important for me to say this, Ed. God was not mad. God was not upset. God was not angry. Um, God, his heart was full of love. But yet I had this incredible sense of his absolute holiness and righteousness. And he wanted me to understand his standard, as it were, of judgment. And it had to do with love. <laughs> and that's what began the change on the inside of me. And so this love really was vertical and it was horizontal. When I say vertical, I mean how we worship God through the Messiah Jesus and it's horizontal in terms of our relationships. And so the Messiah Jesus said this, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. And in the very same way I've loved you, the very same way I've loved you, love each other. And so what the father stressed to me is he was very concerned about people, about his sons and daughters, that we got our worship right and our relationships right. Now, when we have our worship and our relationship right, and at what Tony just said, what's the Shema? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself, worshiping God and relationships and love with one another. It creates an atmosphere for miracles. Tell me one miracle that has occurred when you've been ministering. Just one that comes oh to mind. Oh my, uh, there are so many. I, I, I will give you this example. Uh, there was a young man from California. He was not a believer in the Messiah Jesus. He was just a typical person, a sinner, did not know God. He attended a church service and God was healing people. And so uh, he was born deaf. And so I By the way, that's a messianic miracle. That's why they were so amazed that Yeshua, the king of the Jews, prayed for people that were born deaf and they got their hearing back. And so I called him forward and I said, if God gives you your hearing, will you surrender your life to the Messiah Jesus? And he said, yes. I said, do you really mean that? He said, yes. And so he, he told me, I don't believe anything's gonna happen. So I prayed for him in the name of the Messiah Jesus. And then when I tested, of course, I tested his hearing to make sure he was deaf beforehand. And when I tested his hearing after the prayer, he literally leaped back and his eyes opened up because he could hear <laughs> out of a deformed deaf ear. And instantly he gives his life to the Messiah Jesus. And so we see miracles like I, this I, I want to hear about the person that lost 260 pounds supernaturally. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this word. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Great news. The deadline has been extended for you to reserve your place on the Sid Roth Israel Tour. Last year, God told me to host a supernatural tour to Israel. I invited Israeli and American friends who move in the miraculous to join us. The tour was such a spiritual highlight, we're going to do another one this year in Jerusalem. Our Israeli adventure is over the Thanksgiving holiday, so you would not have to take as much vacation time from work. And we've kept this top quality tour under $3,000, and that includes all taxes and tips. Let me show you the most amazing country on earth. Don't miss out on going with Sid Roth on the Israel tour for this special low price. The deadline has been extended to August 20th. Call now for the free brochure at 1-800-959-1062. Please specify the Sid Roth Israel trip when you call or visit our website at sidroth.org. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Tony Kemp. And Tony, you were telling me, because I've interviewed uh, Dr. McLean, David Herzog, many others that have had supernatural gifts for people to lose weight mm -hmm. instantly, mm -hmm. supernaturally, uh, some gradually, but supernaturally. Mm -hmm. What happened with you? I had met Dr. Rennie McLean. Uh, he was doing a meeting in Borger, Texas. And uh, Dr. McLean's a weightlifter and uh, I was more overweight then than I am now, and I'm still continuing to lose weight. And he says to me, you need to lose some weight. And I said, yes, I do. Will you pray for me? And so he prays for me. 
And I felt nothing, but it was on a Thursday. I, because I, I believed that God was going to do it, I went to the clothing store. I bought a pair of pants I could not get in. And that was on a Thursday. And now, 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 by the way, what did the salesman think about that? <laughs> I didn't tell the salesman. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just, I, I just got. Listen, the I have pants. a whole wardrobe of pants <laughs> I can't get in, but that's not the reason I that I bought them too small. I but understand. go ahead. <laughs> so then, what happens is, is on a Thursday I can't get in them. On Friday I can get in them a little bit. On Saturday a little bit more. On Sunday morning they fit perfectly. I preached in them. When I finish the service and I go home, it's afternoon, I'm still wearing these pants, they're buckled, they fall off of me. As time goes on, Sid, I discovered that I supernaturally lost 50 pounds. You, you weren't trying. I was not trying, I was not dieting. God just did it supernaturally. But once God did this for you, you find that when you pray for others, it happens. Tell me another story. Well, I began sharing my personal testimony, what God had done for me. and. And that with God, nothing is impossible. And with God, all things are possible. And Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to the person that believes. Well, a woman came. She uh, weighed 400 pounds. The Lord spoke to me and said she's going to have supernatural weight loss. And she leaves the meeting. It appears as if nothing happens. One year later, she comes to see me. I didn't even recognize the woman. She said, you don't remember me. I said, no, I don't. She said, you ministered to me one year ago, and I have lost 260 pounds. And she wasn't trying. And she wasn't trying. Now, that's my kind of weight loss. Uh, tell me about, you, know, you had an experience that I'm interested in, uh, in which you were taken to heaven and told about the United States. Yes. Uh, I believe it was 2003. Uh, my spirit left my body. I went to the throne of God, which, by the way, is as big as a mountain. God spoke to me. I wouldn't even lift up my heads because the experience of God's presence and glory was just so great. I was literally at his feet. And he said, pray for the United States. And essentially, this is the truth. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And that means institutions, business, economy, school systems, even organizations, even church organizations and institutions. Everything will be shaken. And what God wants to do, God's not mad. God's not upset. God loves people. But God knows that people are spiritually asleep. And so God wants to use the shaking to wake people up to seek the Messiah Jesus and the church to surrender to the Messiah Jesus so we can do what he wants, which is to bring people to Jesus. What would you say if I forced you to? What is the major key that you have learned to worship? I would say surrender, to love God, to do what he says, and to love people. And, and the best way for people to do that is to soak in the supernatural, to see what's possible. But you know, when I see you, I see a man that enjoys God. Yes. Well, one of the things God did talk to me about was he talked to me about Hebrews 6, where it talked about Enoch walk with God. And it says, Enoch please God. And if a person goes to their original language, here's what they will discover. That word pleased means that Enoch enjoyed God and he was enjoyed by God. And remember I shared, I shared with you that the Father's heart and Jesus is full of joy? What gives the Father joy? What gives Jesus joy is my obedience to him, my love for him, and my love for people. That's what he enjoys. And when he enjoys me, I experience his love and his presence, and then I'm able to share his love and his presence. And that means that people are going to come to Jesus, people are going to be healed of their sicknesses and diseases, and people's lives are going to be changed. As, as Tony is sharing right now, can you feel the love of God? Can you feel the peace of God? When I interviewed you on worship on the radio, Mm -hmm. I asked you to worship, mm -hmm. and you surprised me mm -hmm. because this is what I expected you to do. Mm -hmm. I expected you to start singing praise mm -hmm. songs and worship songs. Instead, he just nonstop 
started telling me how much he loved God, mm -hmm. started telling God how much he loved God and quoted scriptures. Mm -hmm. That was what your idea of worship mm -hmm. was. Mm -hmm. And, but the presence of God got so thick mm -hmm. when you did that. Mm -hmm. But you weren't doing it for that purpose. You were doing that because you enjoy God. Right. And he enjoys me when I just love him and obey him. The heart of the father is to have intimacy with his sons and daughters. And that can happen to, to any person who says, Jesus, you're my Messiah. You're my Lord. You're my Savior. I want to be with you. The father wants to be with his sons and daughters, and it gives him great, great delight when we're with him through the Messiah Jesus. Very quickly, tell me about the supernatural rain. Very quickly. Okay. One minute. Okay. Um, there was a woman who uh, loved Jesus. Uh, she was a farmer, uh, no husband, uh, no son. Uh, there was a drought in her area. She asked me to come out and do home meetings, which I did. One time she said to me, she said, we don't have any rain here, will you pray for rain? And so uh, we just simply asked the Father in the name of his, his son Jesus to grant rain. And it began to rain on her property, her property only. She lived in a small town next to a lot of farmers. The, the neighbors began to say, why does it rain on your property and not on ours? What will God do for those that enjoy his presence? Do you know what? When you enjoy God's presence, you bless God, and you, he, you will walk in so much favor. But don't, do, I don't, Tony, you don't do it to get something from God. Right. You do it because you're created right. to worship God. Right. You are created to worship God. Are you frustrated that you are not seeing in your life the kind of miracles, signs, and wonders you've read about in the Bible? Are you desperate for the supernatural of God in your life? Are you tired of praying and never seeing results? Tony Kemp wants to impart to you the keys to unlock an open heaven where miracles, healing, and answers to prayers are commonplace. Call now and receive Tony Kemp's three-part audio CD teaching series, Worship, Bringing Heaven to Earth. Yours for a donation of $26. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number one. 1297. Through this easy to follow biblically based audio CD series, you'll learn how to worship God in a new powerful way so that God will send you angels of provision, impart revelation for every area of your life, transport you to a supernatural place where your every need is met, open up the windows of heaven, and so much more. You'll learn that worship is the key to bring the hand of God out of heaven to earth. And Tony will even pray for you to be brought into the sound and glory of God. Don't miss out on getting Tony Kemp's three-part audio CD teaching series, Worship, Bringing Heaven to Earth. Yours for a donation of $26. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 1297. Call or you can write to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 1297 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural, my guest prayed for someone born with no eyes, and witnesses saw the eyeballs materialize.